Hey and welcome to this week's Wisdom Wednesday. I'm uh, going to turn these lights down because I'm getting a rather big glare here. In today's Wisdom Wednesday, I am talking about the superpowers of the mind that most people will never access fully because they don't know how to control their mind properly. Most people would have had little glimpses of some of these superpowers. They may not recognize them as superpowers, and if you are a super logical person, you will tend to discount that they are superpowers. So as an example, pretty much everyone here has had that experience of sort of feeling someone looking at them and turning around and seeing someone looking at them, or synchronistic experiences where they've been thinking about someone and that person contacts them. And again, as I said, if, the, if you're a very logical person, you'll discount them. The mind has the ability to access information beyond logic. Way beyond logic. But we're not taught how to access information beyond logic. So when we come up through our education systems, we are trained that anything else other than logic doesn't count. And for the most part, the education develops logic and downplays other sources of information. As though other sources of information can't be trusted And this is a, a, a super challenge, really, because logic's important and logic should be developed, but logic in itself has its place, but it can be quite slow. So I prefer to use a superpower first and then use logic to support or to see the weakness in what my superpower has come up with. So I'll give you a little glimpse into this and how this might work. The, if you've got a problem, let's just say you've got a business problem, and when that problem's first realize or someone represents that problem to you they explain that you've got this problem excuse me i'm just turning some lights down here in the background because of the the glare um, if you try and solve that problem right there and then with your logical mind you can only solve it from what you know to that point in your life meaning your intellectual capacity, your past experiences, your intellect, your logic informs you with the solution to that problem. But as I said, it can only be based on what you know to that point. It's based on your experience, intelligence and logic. If you want to go past your present understanding, your present logic, your present level of intellect, there are other ways of gaining information that are far superior. And usually when I present this, this information, people kind of think of it as some kind of metaphysical model, but there's some good science now uh, that take it out of metaphysical models. We'll talk about that in a second. So... I will never respond to a problem, an important problem, with my present state of logic and intelligence. 
because I know I can go one better than that. So what I will do is I will meditate on the problem. When we say meditate, I will actually formally meditate. And what's happening in my brain when I formally meditate? My brain waves are going from beta down to through alpha, theta, into delta. It doesn't matter. Alpha, theta region is where I want it to be. And as those brain waves lower, some other things happen in my brain. The Blood supply to the amygdala decreases. The amygdala area of the brain is deactivated. And because the amygdala is deactivated, stress and fear is reduced greatly because the amygdala is a flight or fight center of the brain based on the three brain model. At the same time, as I go down into alpha and theta, my prefrontal cortex increases in activation. And as I move down into theta, more areas of my brain light up. And in old models of left-right hemisphere, there is suddenly greater connectivity between the left and right hemispheres. And this means that we now are having a cross-relationship between the logic and creative sides of the brain. And in some ways, you know, you could use another model for this. It's almost an exec executive brain function working with the limbic system in some way. The, 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 the emotions, the, the, the feeling areas of the brain. So in the latest brain science, they're showing that meditation, because it activates so many more areas of the brain and reduces fear through the amygdala, that we increase in intelligence. Now that's obvious to anyone that meditates. You'll, you will observe that you make far better choices. But that's not where I'm going with this. This is actually the scientific model that sort of explains some of the superpower experiences that we have when we are long-term meditators. So in that lowering of the brain waves and the amygdala being deactivated and left and right hemispheres working together we have deep insight that goes beyond logic. This is really important. It goes beyond logic. Meaning the brain is working and picking up patterns and understanding patterns. John Viveki, a cognitive scientist who works with meditation and flow states, says that the brain itself, so I'm taking it right out of a metaphysical model here, the brain itself has the ability to pick up patterns way beyond what our logic can. And so in that process, what I would experience as an example is fully formed solutions to a problem that go far beyond my logic ability and my past experience, which has informed my logical decision making. So everyone here would have experienced that to a lesser degree when you are sh struggling with a problem and you're trying to work it out th through hard thinking. So hard thinking, your brow's sort of furrowed, you're trying to be logical about it. But then you go for a walk on the beach or you, you go and do something outside in nature or, or, and you just let it go and all of a sudden an idea pops into your mind. That, that's a smaller example of what can happen when you are trained to meditate deeply and drop your mind from alpha through to, down into, from beta alpha into theta. 
Um, and so you get evolved solutions to your problems. Not only that, you can know things. So as an example, when I'm reading someone, if my logic's not there, I just know this about the person because again, when I'm working with someone, I'm dropping my logic to, and again, from a brain science perspective, I'm activating through lowering the brain waves areas of my brain that have high level pattern recognition. Now, I know it goes further than that because, as an example, when I'm working with someone, I can't even see them. It's on the phone. I still know what's happening for them, and that I could tell that they've held their breath. I know what emotion they're experiencing right in that moment. Again, there's no science for that at this point in time. So these superpowers get activated again, as I said, when we drop you can drop the logic, meditate, and ponder on a problem. So a model for that, if you want to try this, is after a meditation, when you know that you've settled, you've relaxed, just ask your mind, just soft ponder. So pondering is different to hard thing. A soft ponder is relax into the problem. And ask your mind to come up with solutions but you must relax and you must not force it. And after meditation, what you may find is that you will get an idea and it's really good to write those ideas down. And then don't force it, give it a week and keep writing down all these concepts and ideas about how to solve the problem. And I almost guarantee at the end of the five or six days, you'll have solutions that you just wouldn't have thought of if you were trying to use hard think. Or you might have gotten there, but it would have taken you a lot of effort and a really uh, a, a lot of time. So you write it down. And so when you get really good at this and you're used to it, because it comes down to trust, right? When you, when you learn to read someone, by the way, you've got to trust what happens for most people. Like they may have some idea about what's happening for someone and then the other part of the brain goes, oh, that might not be right. I've always had to just go, when I'm working with someone, I know, <laughs> I, tr I trust it, you see. I know what's happening for that person, so I just go bang, bang, and I tell them. And because I've done it for so long, I, and the feedback is usually, yeah, that's right, that's right, exactly, yes, that's right, that's right. Obviously, I've built my trust up over time. Now, this is the same for business. It's the same for anything that I've ever done. I can trust that to inform me, I can trust those superpowers that most people will never experience to give me fully formed solutions. It informs me about all sorts of things that really aid me. Now we all have access to this, again, as I said, it's, it's the practice of dropping mind, learning to write down those impulses, and then, coming back to what I said before, then you bring your logical mind to it and look for the strengths and weaknesses in what your unconscious has given you. Now, unconscious is one word, as I said before, from a brain science perspective, they may use the word it's a, the merging of the left and right hemisphere where the creative side is working in a disassociated manner to give you fully formed solutions the logic just can't arrive at on its own. By the way, John Vivekan calls this um, unconscious learning or implicit learning versus explicit learning. So explicit learning is when you uh, study something versus lowering and dropping the mind and the mind, the brain, has the ability for high-level pattern recognition to work things out outside of logic, and that's why it comes fully formed. And it feels like a superpower, because you've done nothing for it other than drop logic, lower the brainwave states, and then the concept, the idea, the intuition just arrives for you. This is a really powerful thing to do.
It's a really powerful thing to do in regards to your own life path, right? In any decision you've got to make, how to communicate to someone. If someone's playing you, so in business as an example, sometimes there's power plays. There's all sorts of things going on where people are approaching you and they come in with a very smiling face, but underneath it all, they're there to use you, all those sorts of things. When you're able to use the superpowers, you get information about what people are up to, where they're coming from. Very, very powerful once you learn to trust that. And I like to t teach this because I, I feel like it's a just such an important subject. I also work with a lot of very logical people. I'm a logical person, very logical. But I'm not fixated in logic. I know there's way more to me than just the logic. And that more to me has access to information that my logic just can't have access to if I just rely on the logic. Anyway, that is it for Wisdom Wednesdays. I'm going to head over to Upgrade Yourself in a few minutes. And I'm going to be doing a live cast on a what I consider a really important subject. And that's about what's happening in the world at the moment. And we're, we're living in a world which has an amazing amount of conflict, obviously. And we've got ideology wars. And I'm sad to say the world looks dumb at the moment. It looks, looks, <laughs> this is a, this poor journalism. There's just, there's just a lack of thinking. There is an addiction to ideologies. There is an addiction to one side with a certain sort of view running down another side that's got another sort of view. And none of this can lead to any good, or maybe it will, because there's going to be huge crises, um, which will break down old structures so the new structures can come into play. And that's what happens in evolution. Old structures break down through wars and crises for the new to arise. Um, but I, I really want to share something about this. I just feel it's so important that we now look to developing wisdom in how we deal with these things. So, yep, if you haven't already, go join the Upgrade Yourself group because I'll be doing a lot more of those types of teachings into that group rather than this group, which is uh, uh, certainly about business and developing business models and superpowers of the brain help you <laughs> build successful businesses. But this, I want to share, there's a real love teaching for me. Uh, the world needs wisdom. As an example, I wouldn't consider myself left-wing or right-wing, and there's a huge war between the left and the right on the planet at this point in time. I follow right-wing uh, educators, and I follow left-wing educators. And both sides have their strengths and weaknesses in the way that they view things. And wisdom comes from being able to think critically about what's been communicated or critically about anything. The problem in the world at the moment is that those people that are locked into ideologies are the opposite of critical thinkers. They're living out the human shadow in the most profound way at the moment. Playing we're right, you're wrong games. And that never leads to anything good. This started for me, this, by the way, this, this uh, interest in this when I had a, a, a conversation with a journalist. All the journalists in Australia at this point tend to project their biases into any conversation rather than being good quality journalists. And when the journalists are acting that way, they're actually shaping a population who also think that way. You must be able to go past your own personal biases to think critically. And thinking critically leads to wisdom. 
Anyway, I'm going to go over to the Upgrade Yourself Facebook group and share my viewpoints on that. See you there. Catch you.